Okay, right. so we are live. Oh, we are live already. We are. <sighs> Finally, we are once again live and blinking, you know. <laughs> yeah, the red thing start blinking. Zero people in here. Okay, let's see if it's if it's sharing. Are you ready, Ian? Are you ready to rock people's really world? Ready. You have all the world. go. You have all your I, go I'm nuggets. Ready to share stories. So, yeah. <laughs> This 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 should be interesting. I've not done this since last year. <laughs> last wow. year. Yeah, actually, the last one I did was with you guys as well. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Did you know? Yeah, yeah. Hello, yeah. hello, Ahmad. Okay, feel free to quiz. Uh, put in your questions. Uh, for Ian, then we can quiz him. Um, it's going to be starting. Hello, Charlotte. It's Hi, going Charlotte. to be starting at seven. Uh, six thirty, not seven. Sorry. So, it's uh. So in this meantime, let's just chit chat a little bit. Sure. Maybe. Maybe. maybe what's what does Charlotte and uh? All I say, e, Ijaz, Ijaz. Ijaz, <laughs> Ijaz. I think Ijaz, Ijaz Ahmad. Yeah. Ijaz Ahmad. What, what What do you guys Ijaz. do? By the way, there's about a lag time of five, three to five seconds. You know. Three to five seconds. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's, so they might take a bit of time to reply. That's so in fine. the meantime, um, how is it like, you know, being stuck at home? Oh, where did he disappear to? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Missing Ian. Missing Our Ian. star is missing. Our guest for today Our is star missing. is back. I'm sorry, I, I, I clearly <laughs> click login because I rather I can't, I, can't, I can't comment anything at all. I see, I see. So uh, how how have how have the whole MCO been treating you? How the MCO been treating me? Uh, well, I mean, I mean, it's a new one again now. It is a new one. It's a third one this time. Um, well, I started appreciating my home a lot more. Started doing a lot more decorations, you know, um, just cause I feel like I'm using. I'm really using my house now. <laughs> Before that, you know, you go to office and then you know, you come back home and you're like, eh, you know what? Just want to watch TV, have dinner, and that's it. But but now you wake up, you're like, you know what? It would be nice to have some plants. So I started, you know, <laughs> getting into, into plants, into like decorating my place. I've spent a lot on, um, on, home, on, on, on home decor. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> this room, not yet though. You can see it's quite, it's quite bare. It's but, quite bare. Yeah. There will be plants here soon. You know, I'll be getting shelves. So we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> nice. Nice. Doing? uh and How let omit go first uh, uh, for me it's same old same actually yeah I, I don't see any difference though like we've been working from home since last year right? okay fair enough fair enough yeah yeah but this plant thingy i noticed like everyone like the first thing they go to when they're stuck at home is plants yeah see nobody's like going and get a pet or something <laughs> <laughs> is is the one behind you? Is that is that fake or real? <laughs> oh, that one is fake. That's wow. fake. <laughs> Look at this this baby. Wow, wow. There's wow. one. There's like a few days I forgot to plant it, and everything just bleh, and then I pour a lot of water, and then it come back oh, alive I again. See, I, see. Oh, I, see. I think I should take my my whole laptop and bring it to balcony. I do have some stuff there. Yeah, you see there. there. I, I I told you. So <laughs> yeah, but I mean work wise, I think I feel. Worked stretching a lot more because you're. I I I think it's the same last year. Like 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 you work a lot harder um, because sometimes you don't know that oh, like time has passed so much. Uh, whereas in office, you know, you have colleagues, you have a bit of distraction. You're like, hey, you know, it's time for coffee. You know that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think um when it comes to. I think one of the things that you you also feel that work stretches a lot is because there isn't a time where you really cut off. Like back then, you're in office, and then when you want to go home, you actually drive home, you actually walk home or something. There's there's a point of time where you pack up and go, but That's over true. here, you don't pack up and go, right? Right, right. So it's quite sucky. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't miss the commute at all. Like I'm I'm happy with this 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 work from home <laughs> arrangement. Um, um, but I do miss the people though. Uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think, I think the people and the, and, the, and the colleagues, I think that's one of the things that makes a company great, like the people. 
And yeah. I think lacking that, I mean, you 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 doing you doing you doing good work, like like work that's fun and all, but but yeah, I mean, part of part of work is the people that you're working with. So yeah, I do miss that. We are all social animals, after all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, probably also, you know, why I uh, why I contracted <laughs> freaking COVID last year as well, <laughs> which is no good. But that's another story. <laughs> Okay, but in the meantime, just uh, I mean, before we start, we can just share a little bit that uh, our dear Ian here, he's going to be running the Shopify class with all of like with, with Next Academy. So if you guys are interested um, in in setting up a Shopify store, uh, you know, feel free to reach out. I think uh, Omit's going to share that link in uh, in the chat. Um, so, but yeah, I mean. I, I, people sometimes people will wonder why why do we really need to purposely go for a Shopify class or anything? Uh, actually, you can do it yourself; it's no problem. Also, um, but I guess at the same time, um, sometimes there are just so many options over there. Like even for me, when I first you know tr started trying to use Shopify, I was like, "What are these buttons?" And I started calling Ian. He was the go-to guy for me. I called him, Ian. What what am I supposed to do? Uh? where am I supposed to paste this? What's this thing? What pages do I need to have? You know, he was the person who actually showed me the way. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> the light. He was the person who showed me the light, right? Because he built. Because I mean, he by by profession, he is not a Shopify developer or Shopify store builder, but he built his store on Shopify and he built it really <laughs> extensively. So he knows a lot about Shopify, guys. Um, uh, and he, you know, he when you when you hear him speak about Shopify, you, it's as though he. It's as though it's as though there's this like wife like that. As if I oh own God. it. Yeah. It's like I, as I though you I own it. Yeah. Yeah. You'd be wrecking in so much money right now. I, I I probably should have, yeah. Um I wish, but it's all right, you know. You can own the share, you can own the Shopify share. I, I, I do, I do own Shopify shares. Oh, I, so I you have it. you're a partial owner then. I, I wouldn't say that, but I mean it's not moved much. <laughs> I mean I think I bought it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's a, I think I think I think one of the best things that I think Shopify has has done is the is user experience. Like they, they didn't think they didn't think so much about the, the, the customer. They they didn't they, they thought about the customer a lot, and that is the business owners and how to make life easy for them. And it's it's so beautifully done. Yeah. Okay. I can imagine you saying that. Okay, guys, like it, we are one minute one minute to start. Are you ready? Are both of you guys ready? I, I I am ready. I am ready as well. Nice. Okay. So I'm like doing a countdown like 10, 9, 8. Wow, it's a lot. Okay. So well guys, um in the meantime, please do share uh for whoever who seems to be Ooh, okay, this is a very good question. On Chin on questions are coming up. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes, please throw the questions in. Bring the questions in. Oh, we started with I, questions right away. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, oh, okay, 6.30. So now it's time for me to introduce, okay? <laughs> Ready, <laughs> set, go. <laughs> okay, welcome back, guys, once again to this uh, Thursday, well, it's Thursday, Thursday Next Academy webinar. So we are pretty much doing it every week. So please follow us, stay tuned with us, uh, click share, click like, click subscribe, and follow us. Um, for every Thursday or almost every Thursday uh, webinar. And today we have a very special someone and his name is called Ian Ng, right? And Ian, <laughs> Ian um, so with me here is Omid uh, and Ian. So Omid, he's a part of Next Academy and you know, he, he put this whole thing together today for, for all of you guys. Uh, so it's very exciting. And with Ian, Ian is such a good friend. I've known him for years right now um and yeah yes and and what is the most exciting part like the reason one one of the big reasons why we brought him on here today is because we want him to be able to share his experience on how he actually built his store i mean one of the most amazing or mind-blowing thing is that from zero visitors a day to 50k visitors a day like how many websites can have 50k visitors a day a day okay guys a day um, so really excited um, to be able to have you on board with us, Ian. Thank you very much. So maybe Ian, tell us, everyone, tell everyone about yourself, your experience, and how you got started with e-commerce. 
All right. Um, hi guys. Um, so I think she's done an introduction of who I am. Um, <laughs> but to go to go a little bit back, right? So I've uh, I've always been. Um, I, I love building things up, right? So I started my career off in the digital marketing space, and uh, later on, I realized that oh, e-commerce is. Uh, I think about 2014, 2015, around that period, uh, e-commerce started booming. The rise of uh, the the Shopee Lazadas they started coming on. So I thought, hey, you know what? This might be a good opportunity to um, to go into into the e-commerce space, right? But then the thing was to figure out what to sell, right? So again, I was looking at different different things. There was pets. I was looking at electronics, and uh, eventually I was the, I, I thought, hey, you know what? I think health products, right? That's something that everyone everyone buys. Um, and, and like, I mean, you had a, you had stepped into a pharmacy at one point in time, right? So uh, I thought, yeah, I, I'll, I'll, I'll digitalize that. Uh, everyone seems to be creating stores that sell everything, right? So the Zaloras were selling, uh, I mean, the, 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 the Zoras on fashion, then there's a the Lazada, they sold everything. The Shopee, again, they sold everything. And I, I was thinking, you know what? There is a space where people wanted to spell, uh, visit a store that specializes in one particular vertical, right? So again, I went through a different verticals and uh, the one that really stood with me was, uh, was health because uh, it reached a very wide market uh, and also it was scalable, right? So there was a lot more products I could keep adding to the store, growth was there uh, and uh, that's what got me excited. So um, however, um, the problem with, uh, with me setting up a health store was that I did not look anything like the person who would set up a health store. I was like 10 kilos heavier than what I was right now. Like you see the CEO of a, like, like, like a fat CEO of a health store, trust me, you're not going to buy from a health store. You're not going to believe it, right? But, uh, but yeah, that was actually one of the, one, one of the challenges. Uh, health was not exactly uh, really exciting or uh, like, like passionate for me, but I did see an opportunity there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so that, 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 that was room for growth, right? So. Um, so yeah, I mean, I started off um, selling actually just purely organic products. Um, that was uh, that was paraben free, like 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 soap that that had no um, like uh, toxins in it and things like that. Uh, but then I realized the market was really small, and therefore uh, 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 my co-founder and I we decided, okay, you know, we're gonna expand it to to other things, right? So we sold things like uh, so from from healthy groceries. To things that you find in pharmacies, from uh, health, uh, personal care, body care, hair care, uh, all these things, right? So this, uh, basically, we we were starting up in a space where Watsons, Guardian, stuff that you see in in, in a pharmacy, uh, we, we we basically brought online, uh, and these guys were not online yet at the time, so it was it was a good um, uh, first mover for us, uh, and yeah, that's uh, basically how we came about with uh, with Koyara. Um, I'll, I'll tell a little bit about the name, like Koyara. Like, um, so we actually, uh, I remember when we came up with it, uh, we took a, took we actually took the name out of a um, a page from Lazada and Zalora. Um, so we wanted a name that, regardless what race you were, uh, regardless what language you spoke, you could pronounce it right. Like see Lazada, right? It's it's three three syllables alternating between consonant and vowel, consonant and vowel, right? So that's what we wanted. So we thought, okay, you know what? Um, we came, we went through a whole list of different ones, right? La Toya and all, 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 all different, and then Koyara came to kind of kind of roll off the tongue, and I was like, yeah, that could work. Um, you you do you do know that not a lot of people can pronounce R, right? So you see, yeah, exactly. Koyala, so that's, 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 Koyala. So, so exactly. So the, the, we, we we had a lot of the Chinese what? folks, especially the R, right? I did not. We 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 we, we completely forgot about that. So yes, I was like, oh, took a hello. So this is Koyala. I was like, yes, this is Koyala. And I was like, oh, Koyara, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, something I would have changed. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's that's the genesis of how uh, we started, lah. Yeah. Definitely. Mm. Um. So this is a question that someone asked like previously. Let me just see. Okay, uh, I can show it up. Okay, so someone posted this question in previously. You know, why not just focus on marketplace, right? Um, why, why do you even bother to even start a website in the first place? Right. So you see, the thing with, uh, with Shopping Lazada, and uh, I'll, I'll start by saying we actually were listed on both Lazada and Shop, uh, Lazada, Shopee. And I think at the time there was, there was Gem 5 and um, there's there one 11th Street. Yeah, 
Oh, it seems like so long ago, but yeah, I, uh, I don't think both of them are, I don't think they're both around anymore, right? Yeah, yeah so we were yeah, listed across all the marketplaces yeah. uh, there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then of course we had our own website, but uh, the reason why we actually listed on those was actually where we would charge about uh, 10 to 15% higher uh, on these platforms. Uh, and what, what happens is that we actually, because we don't really have control of the customers, we don't have control of um, who we're selling to. We have no idea who these guys are, how old they are, um, male or female, you know, um, we don't have any of the details, right? And that's, 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 that's the disadvantage when you're selling on a marketplace. You don't have control yeah. of your customers, you don't have control of the whole customer experience, uh, but we had control of the box, right? That we were being sent out. So what we did was that we would put like a little flyer in there. Uh, we printed flyers and we see we had like a promo code there. We say, hey, you know what? If you go to koyara.com, you could actually buy this for like 10, 15% cheaper, right? And we drove a lot of customers from the marketplaces to our website from that, right? So I think one of the, uh, so, so, so to, to reinstate the point, right? I think uh, you, 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 I wouldn't say stay off or compete against the, the marketplaces because you're not gonna win, right? It's, it's, it's really difficult. Uh, they've got a lot of money and uh, the, the way they spend on marketing is ridiculous, right? So, but there are ways, right, to use these guys to, 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 to take advantage of your own store and to promote your store, right? So that's what we did, right? Uh, take control of whatever that we have. Uh, in this case, uh, we had control of whatever we put into the box, right? So we could put flyers, samples, you know, things like that. Anything that got them to come over to our store. So, yeah, I mean, why, why, why I, I would suggest for you to build your own website would probably be... Um, because you want control uh, over the customer experience, right? You want to know who your customers are, right? You want to do retargeting, you want to do remarketing, you know, uh, knowing who your customers are, right? What their pain points are, talking to them, reaching out to them, asking them what, um, uh, how they feel about, you know, your website or your, your whole shopping experience, uh, things like that, right? You don't have control uh, over that when you're on the marketplace. I see, I see. Um, there's a question that just came in by Kevin Chan. Um, are you just a pure online retailer or do you have any distribution agreement or exclusivity over your products in Malaysia? You know, if I, do you source locally um, or overseas? And if you're an online retailer, what's your USP? Right. So uh, we are an online retailer. Uh, the thing is that we do not own a single, uh, single product on our website, right? So we were literally a marketplace for health products. Uh, we had, again, all the top brands from... Uh, the Scots or even uh, the Sukin, um, I think Johnson, Johnson, all these guys, right? They were, they were, they were, they were listing our platform and we went directly to them uh, to actually uh, work with them to do the marketing. Uh, I remember going, even going to PNG, like Procter & Gamble, uh, we worked with, with Dettol and all these, all these kind of products, are, right? So, uh, but again, at the end of the day, we don't have control over uh, any of these products. So what we do is that, uh, we we would we would go to them right and say we want to sell your products right and they would ask what's what's what is your USP right uh, again for us because we are a vertically focused website right we are able to identify our customers a lot a lot better than let's say the marketplaces right so if if we if we wanted to target someone with a particular health problem uh, or a health condition we would know who to go to right because maybe this person has bought dandruff shampoo in the past. Uh, in, in the past three, uh, three months, right? And therefore, maybe you have a new dandruff product or you have a new product for eczema for uh, whatever it is, right? We would be able to actually target these guys, right? And, it's, and, and you know, health is something that I'm sure you don't want people knowing what, what kind of problems that you have, right? It is something that is of, 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 of extreme privacy, right? Uh, so, and the great thing about, like I said, with... Uh, with doing this digitally, which is what the retail guys are not able to do, is that we are able to, of course, to target these guys and tell them, hey, you know what? I think these products might work for you, right? Uh, and we know that because you have this particular problem, right? And we're not we're, we're not creating like an eczema, like 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 a like campaign and things like that. We just know that if, if people who have bought items who have previously solved these health problems, um, we'll target these guys and send it out to them and it's all done dynamically, right? So, nice. um, so yeah, okay, I think I'm going a bit off here, um, but yeah, no, we don't really have, uh, we do have some that were exclusive to us. Um, we, uh, for those, for those, we said that we will, we would not only, uh, sell it on our website, we will handle the entire, 
uh, online um, online marketplace for you as well. So even in Lazada, the Shopee, we actually even we 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 listed it there for them as well, right? Um, nice. Now with uh, most of these things are already sourced locally. Um, the one thing is that uh, with products overseas, they need to be registered with KKM, right? So with health products, um, it's not so easy to bring them in. Like everything needs to be registered. So if you bring like a like a health uh, uh, like a protein shake, for example, they would scrutinize every single ingredient in there, right? And just to register these products, it costs so much money. It costs so much time. So we rather work with distributors, right? Uh, who have already done all the registrations, and we handle what we're good in, which is the display, um, uh, like, which is the selling online. Yeah. So yeah, we're so, just an online so, retailer. Mm. So so guys, um, nice. what's, happening? what's happening? Can someone just off the my voice? Sorry. No, I'm hearing no, my I'm own hearing voices now. now. Oh, you're hearing your own voice. Yeah. I'm sure, it's a good voice. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, a really quick one, guys. Uh, the, so, so a few things that Ian just said, a few go nuggets is number one, when you, are, when you are having your own website, uh, you have the ability, you have control, you have control to especially, and also uh, Camilla just said that if you're going on Marketplace, he said that Marketplace cannot build branding. Lah. That is very true. Um, it's very tough to build branding on Marketplace. So what Ian did is that he still put his items in those marketplace in Shopee, Lazada, but he find a way to get them to come to his website. And he did that via his box and wire the, and, and he also put in flyers inside the box as well to get people into his website. So that's definitely one of the ways that you can go about it. And you also saw how he used data to actually um, retarget people of certain health issues, right? If someone has been buying a dandruff um, shampoo, if you have a new dandruff shampoo, then you can recommend it to these to people who have actually bought dandruff shampoo, and all these things can be done automatically, right? Ian, you were saying. Yeah, and, and yeah. this was why why these health companies they actually rather work with us because again the marketplaces are not going to do things like that, right? They wanted to reach uh, their their potential customers uh, fast, and um, and yeah, that was that was that was one way for us to do that. Um, are you able to answer this question in a really chop chop nice nice way? Chop chop oh, nice sure. sweet, I mean, simple. We, we, yeah. We, we tried doing some importing with uh, uh stuff from the US and things like that. Uh, at the end of the day, we 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 tried with a few products. Um, we ended up just parallel importing them, uh, which is illegal, right? It's not allowed to do that. Um, uh, because we would want to test the market to see how things how things were uh, performing. <laughs> Uh, by the end of the day, if you really want to, 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 to do it, you have to go through the process, go and pay for every ingredient to be scrutinized with that. It could take between three to nine months just to register one product. Uh, and if one ingredient gets rejected, the whole product gets rejected. So um, I, 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 would, I would say look at, the, look at what is allowed before um, um, trying to bring these uh, health products in. Yeah. Nice. So okay, I think I think you know Koyara, um, the story for Koyara has been you know pretty pretty amazing. Uh, I there are some other questions that people just ask. You know, is number one is why should a person use Shopify? I let me just see some of the questions that just came in. Right, like um, Ong Chin On said, what's the difference or what's the speed difference? He's asking for speed difference between WooCommerce and Work, uh, WooCommerce and Shopify. Uh, we also have another person who's asking. Um, Charlotte is asking, hey, you know, should should you use WordPress, Wix, or Shopify? Um, right. So maybe the first question like we can start off with is, you know, why Shopify? You know, um, what's the difference between Shopify, Wix, Weebly, and WordPress, and so on and so forth? Right. Um, well, okay. So um, with WordPress, right? So WordPress is a uh, most of most of WordPress websites I see was uh, self-hosted. That means you need to go and, uh, go and um, buy your own servers to host it, uh, and uh, and you manage the hosting yourself, right? So um, the great thing, right, about Web or Wix and Shopify is that they are hosted on the CDN, right? So a, C a CDN is almost like a server that is distributed all around the world. So imagine like if you are browsing your website from Singapore, uh, you would. And, and let's say the, the nearest server in Asia, let's say it's in Singapore, right? Uh, 
the your customer would, 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 would download the website from Singapore, right? And if it's in the US, a customer in the US comes, uh, the server that is in the US would load your website, right? So therefore it's a lot faster. Um, so that's 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 the speed that, that you get and, and Shopify handles all of that for you, right? So whereas for, for WordPress, it depends on the server that you are hosting it in, right? So if it's if your whole, your website is hosted in Asia, um, the people in Asia will of course be able to to, to access your website fast. But however, the people in the, in the states would find it a little bit slow. So uh, there are CDN uh, servers that you can actually subscribe to and uh, manage it yourself. But and it, it, it gets a little bit technical. So unless uh, unless you are looking to um, uh, to dive into that and really take control of that, uh, I would just recommend um, yeah go 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 straight into into um, uh, services that already do it for you, right? So one thing I said about about Shopify when uh, hold on, what was the question again? The other than the difference. Speed. Um, just just speed, but what's the difference between uh, uh, right. Shopify, Wix, Weebly, and everything else? Right, right. Uh, I think so with Shopify, right? So I think they are they are e-commerce first, right? Whereas with WordPress, with Wix, with um, uh, these websites, like so Wix in particular, I'm, I'm I'll be honest, I'm not familiar with Wix, but based on what I've experienced, uh, Wix is definitely much more for freelancers, for individual sellers. They are they and their creative freedom on the website is amazing, right? So you can change banners, you can customize a lot of different different things. And they started off as a website builder, right? So for personal websites, for uh, individual websites, but e-commerce was something that they just say, yeah, you know what, I, like they'll add it in, uh, but it's not something that they are they're focused on. Same thing goes with WordPress. They are a blog first uh, company, right? And that's what they started off with. Sure, the WooCommerce and all that has started coming in and it's amazing stuff, right? Um, but uh, I would still say at the end of the day, the people who focus um, the most on the whole e-commerce experience is definitely Shopify, right? And for them, they uh, just small things, right? How you add a product into the, uh, uh, how you add a product into your into your website, that whole experience is is amazing, right? Like go try adding a product across all three platforms, right? And when you start realizing that you've got thousands of products to add in, um, then it becomes uh, a bit of a hassle, uh, and then you realize why the whole uh, what you're paying for, right? So Shopify is definitely the more expensive, the premium one. But for people that's serious about e-commerce and saying that e-commerce is going to be the way to go, I, I, I focus on um, my customer's experience when they shop, um, I'll definitely go to its Shopify. Uh, for, uh, um, yeah, and then again, it, 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 it depends on, on, on where you're at, yeah. So it, in a way you say it depends where you're at. Uh, maybe the big question is if someone just today just decided maybe i want to try e-commerce right for the first time in my life um would you suggest for me to just jump straight into shopify i mean shopify is not exactly the cheapest but i'm just trying to test things out instead right i think oh, you want to test things out i mean go for the free ones i mean or even the much cheaper ones the localized ones like the easy stores um there is uh, again the wordpress as well i think that's that's that's, that's a good place to start uh then focus on building something very simple right as simple as possible then work on your marketing because like i said a lot of the uh in malaysia especially right um i realize the design and look and feel of your website is very secondary uh compared to let's say in the states if you go to a really crappy website you're you're gonna feel like oh it feels a bit dodgy i'm not gonna buy but not the case in malaysia i mean you look at look look at the marketplace i mean shopee has like a amazing user experience the zada is very cluttered and you have lay long right where it looks like it was built in 1995 right so it's it's um uh, but people are still are still are still purchasing there right um people are still spending on the buddhas and all that so i mean um so i'll say like i said design would be very secondary um go ahead and start like i said on a on, on, on a cheaper more um, cheaper solution um get a feel of it then of course you know you can upgrade later on uh, migration is not that hard these days um, from one platform to another so so when is the point of time where you know like when do someone decides like it's time to go do shopify at what stage of my business would i would i be at to say that i should consider shopify right now right 
Um, all right. So you see, uh, I think it's like we see with Koyar.com, right? I, I like see. I'm a I'm a, I'm a person who who loves building, right? I've built a lot of digital products, and the first thing that came to mind when uh, when 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 I when I got into Koyar is that hey, you know what? I think we should build a website from scratch, right? Um, but then I realized how uh, how much work that is, right? Just to build an e-commerce site from scratch, right? Because I'm a person who is obsessed with uh, user experience and user interfaces. Like I, I, I love design, right? I really appreciate yeah. design. Uh, so, um, so for myself, I did run through all the different e-commerce. Uh, I think we started off in Magento first, right? So Magento is again one of the first guys. They, I think they were they were the 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 the, the, the first guys who did who did e-commerce um, e-commerce well before uh, Shopify existed, right? Uh, and we were, we were built on Magento, right? And I was looking at, oh my God, like this, this whole experience is horrible, not just for my customers, but even for the users who are, uh, who are uploading products and managing the sites on a day-to-day basis, right? So for me is that when, when a business owner wants to take control over the whole website experience for their customers, as well as also for their, uh, for their inter- for the people internally, right? That's when you you start considering using a platform like Shopify, right? Uh, I would never suggest to go and build your site from scratch. I, I I've done that before for other companies where we built it from from scratch. It cost over a hundred thousand dollars, and it was nowhere even near what any of the solutions are offering uh, today. Um, until you've reached a point where you've done millions of dollars of sales, and you realize that you know what, like small things like a button is 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 is, is um is dropping, sorry, is causing people to drop out, um, things like that, right? Where you, there's some things in Shopify you can't have control over, like the checkout page, uh, then think about um, building your own website from scratch and things like that. Uh, otherwise, honestly, I mean, why, why go through all that hassle? Um, people like Kylie Jenner, who, are, who has done like, like millions in sales a month, that they're still using a, a, a platform like Shopify, right? So it makes things easier, um, yeah. Okay, I think I um. Let's see, let's see what are some of the questions. Uh, okay. So Kevin also concur with you. I use Magento. It's terrible. I know what you mean. But how much technical knowledge and expertise does a business owner need to manage a Shopify store efficiently? Ah, uh, right. Um, technical. Um, I would say if, let's say Magento technicality was is on a scale of uh, one to ten, right? Uh, I'll say Magento will require maybe like a seven, right? Shopify is like a three, right? Because it's, again, they've made everything so simple. Like the smallest things, like even calculating um, the margins of your products, right? They do it there for you. Um, it's it's so idiot proof, right? Like, like um, um, I, I wouldn't want to use an example of who could use it, but... <laughs> Uh, but but yeah, it's uh, technically it is it is uh, one of the most simple um, uh, platforms uh, I've ever come across for e-commerce, and uh, I'm just so amazed with the I'm 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 not so amazed by by, by the front end. It's the back end that I'm so I'm so impressed by, yeah. and the community is so huge as well. So you get plenty of support. He also have this question like, do you sell outside of Malaysia? How do you sleep your focus and how efficient um, Shopify is for other countries, currency, logistics, and so on. Oh, okay. Um, so I don't, um, we did We did try selling, especially like to Singapore, to our neighboring countries and all that. Uh, the problem with that is not so much the selling. Selling was easy. Uh, the problem with our e-commerce is the logistics part of it, right? So it can get expensive uh, and we want to subsidize uh, um, cost of logistics for our customers. And that could be an expensive part on our end as well. So we decided to win Malaysia first rather than uh, um, go internationally. Um, but I do know, again, I've got friends, I think uh, like uh, if you look at um, Jeremy's uh, Vape Club MY, right? So he sells internationally, like globally, and he's using one Shopify account for, for that, right? To manage um, currencies and logistics. Uh, I think he works with, um, I can't remember the logistics company he works with, um, but, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's really easy to um, to localize the currency or lo- even localize the website, uh, depending on who comes in, right? So if someone from Malaysia steps into your website, you can localize it for them, like show a Malaysia flag, like uh, and, and, and uh, post in Mars and things like that. If someone from um, 
it's coming in from Germany, right? And you somehow is a, have a localized Germany a German website, you can do that as well, right? There's a like there's an app for for that. So the app store in Shopify is, is one of the best things. Uh, the community is so huge. So whatever you can think about, someone most likely would have built an app for that. So so guys, quick one like uh, if you guys are interested in building the Shopify store. Um, Ian is going to be running how to build a Shopify store uh, and that's happening on the 12th of June. So let's just pop that into the chat. You guys can find the link there. So do come by and, you know, and Ian's going to be guiding, uh, guiding you guys on how um, to build a store. And he's going to be able to share a lot of very interesting insights as well. Um, let's see. Okay, so there's one question. I don't know, like strawberry. I'm not sure if strawberry is a brand or are you talking about the fruit? Uh, <laughs> but regardless, um, how do I compete with parallel importers? Well, I mean, um, at the end of the day, I mean, well, why do people want to shop with your website, right? I, I, I'll shop with you, right? So if you're competing on a price thing, uh, I mean, you're, you're not going to win in the long run. You could win in the short run, but I'm telling you that it's, uh, it's, 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 it's going to be tough, right? So um, again, for e-commerce is not just about buying the product, the entire experience from discovering the product all the way to receiving the product, right? The whole unboxing and things like that. That's 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 the whole customer experience that uh, um, the e-commerce people should be focusing on, right? Um, how fast they get the products, you know, things like that. So I mean, you you can you you, you can go and compete uh, on a, on a pricing pricing war, uh, but I'm going to tell you it's 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 not going to be a, a long term game for you uh in the end you, you don't want the people to be known uh, to know you as uh, the place where you can get cheap stuff right so um you want to be known for uh like a, 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 maybe 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 that's what your, your your brand represents right like you look at a pharmacy the big pharmacies you go oh, okay you know what i want to buy um um pharma pharmaceutical products that are cheaper um and 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 they will throw prices right because that's what their brand's known for for us like i said it's about um we uh, one thing we did to stand ourselves out is that we had actual pharmacists with actual doctors that you can consult um, on our website uh, via the live chat. Um, so, you know, uh, just things like that, right? Uh, it's part of the entire experience, which is why people want to um, shop with us and come back with us. Yeah. Oh, by the way, if you guys want to know, uh, like, like if you guys try and access Koyara, it's, it's, it's no longer there. The business has been sold. So uh, just letting you know, the, uh, the, the you, you can find articles of, uh, of it online. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's no longer, no longer live anymore. Right. So speaking of Koyara, uh, so what was some of the mistakes that you made with Koyara? Was there any, like anything that you feel like, okay, it was a mistake and then I had to like fix it right. or any problems that you were facing with the business? Mm, oh my, of course. Um, I think one of the biggest things for us is, um, uh, again we were selling products that other people own right and not having control of the product that you're selling uh can be a bit of a problem because again you're in the mercy of someone's hands if, if they decide to not want to sell it to you one day you're cut off you're completely cut off and, and you have nothing to sell right and imagine if that product is something like like 40 percent of your of, of your total revenue right and and it does happen right with large with large retailers uh, Again, I'm talking about the supermarkets, the pharmacies, where they sell products uh, that are owned by others. Uh, it does happen where a bulk of a certain bulk of brands would contribute to the most of your sales, right? Uh, the problem also is that when that happens, uh, you're going to start competing on price, and therefore you don't make much on these big brands. Uh, you'll make much on doing the upselling and cross-selling, you know, and things like that. So, um, I think one thing that we I, I would have done differently would probably be um probably having control maybe maybe having some uh, products that were more something that we made right uh not something that that I, I i hate the idea of selling something that i don't own yeah i can't control the price i can't control the quality um yeah um second thing will probably be that um i think with with um with hiring right i think that was something that was very tricky for us as well um there are some things that are uh, you we were, we were thinking like hey, you know what like like packing products you know what that could that's, that's so simple we'll do it ourselves right 
uh, and we'll save money there instead of like, you'll say, you know, we'll spend the nights packing and things like that. But little did I realize that again, businesses grow. Uh, of the <laughs> <That's a dog. laughs> um, yeah, business grow because of people, right? Uh, the people that, that, that you're with. So you, you don't want to, um, to sting on that, right? Like that, that, that two, three hours that, I, that, 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 that we spend packing things on our own, right? As, 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 as founders and, and owners of the business. We could probably use that to figure out uh, how to grow our business uh, and, and outsource that to someone else, right? So we stinge on a lot of, lot of different things and, uh, and we try to make everyone wear different hats. And in the beginning, I remember because of that, that really stunted our growth. In fact, we were losing even more money than, uh, uh, um, than when we started to hire a much, much, much bigger team to, uh, to, to, have to handle these, these mundane tasks. So, so yeah, I mean, that's, these are probably things that I will, I'll, I'll probably change. Yeah. Right. Okay. There's a question. Are you using Shopify plus or Shopify? I mean, were you using Shopify plus or Shopify? Uh, well, Shopify plus, we, we, we didn't really see the benefits of, uh, going in there. And I think we did explore going to Shopify plus, um, where they had a lot of automation stuff that, um, that, that we could use, but the benefits wasn't that much. You could get like a dedicated account manager that responds to you within 24 hours, uh, which is great. But, uh, but you pay like something like a thousand dollars a month, uh, just for Shopify plus. So I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, I, it probably has changed, changed a little bit more now. Um, right now, I think even the, the, the $79 plan, I can't remember what it's called. I think it's just called Shopify. I think advanced plan that's big and that is, is the middle tier plan. I think that's more than enough for businesses that are looking to grow. Right. Hmm, there's another question. Um, do you think the distributor might start compete with retailer on Shopee, Lazada platform in the future? Oh, of Let's course. Say, I mean, yeah. I, we, we, we saw that happening with us as well, right? Not just with the Shopee and the Lazada mm -hmm. platforms, but the brands themselves. In fact, if you look at, uh, if you buy, buy things like Dettol, right? You see P&G, right? Which is the, uh, the, the distributors themselves are starting to go on these platforms as not as like, like, like uncle Chong's, uh, uh, store and things like that, but they're going as P and G themselves. They are starting to, to create promotions themselves. So they are going into B2C, right? They are going right into B2B. So, so they themselves realize that, you know what, what's, what's the point of going through distributors when we can do it ourselves, uh, online. So, so yeah, I mean, definitely that is, that is a problem. And again, this is why, like I said, uh, selling product that you don't own or don't exclusively distribute, um, could be very challenging. Oh yeah. Mm. Now here's the juicy question. <laughs> <laughs> so give us some tips well, on I mean, how it's not something that you're going to get. <laughs> it's not, it's not something you're going to go, you're going to get like right away. Right. <laughs> Um, uh, but we spent a lot on the marketing part, right? So, um, uh, one, one of the ways, right. Like I said, was, uh, we did some, a bit of guerrilla, guerrilla marketing, like I said, things that using the marketplaces to drive traffic to our website. Uh, but the other thing is also that we, uh, we're very cautious. So we're not a big company. We don't have that much, um, um cash flow to spend on, uh, marketing. So we are very careful with what, uh, with, with, with how we drove traffic to, uh, to our website, right? So, um, things like Google shopping, um, uh, that was, that, that was one of the ways, um, we worked, we, I think more than 80, but eh, more than 70% of our marketing spend was a lot on search ads. Um, so we wanted people, to, so we did target, um, things like, like shampoo, right? Shampoo is just too big, too expensive to target. Right. So we wanted for people to are searching for a specific brand, right. Or a specific health problem. Right. So these are things that people were. Uh, we were solving solution. We were, we were solving problems for people, and when we and when we market, we realized okay, people are coming to us because we help them identify. Uh, we were doing manual tagging, right? So we would tag all the different um, um, personal care products that we, that we have, right? Or even things like like apple cider vinegar, right? There's a lot of health benefits. We would tag every single one of these benefits in there to make sure that people who are searching for, let's say, indigestion or even searching for solutions for, um, uh, what's this, um, like, 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 like stomach pains, you know, of, of, of all these kind of things. 
we would target we would, we would target those things, and that's what we did very differently compared to everyone else. So these kind of um, um, marketing was a lot cheaper because no one else did it, right? So try and find the space that is that that there's not there's it doesn't have that much competition, right? So if you, let's say if you're selling a weight loss product, for example, uh, if you if you if you go to Google Ads and you're going to spend money on the the search and the keyword weight loss. Trust me, you're gonna be burning at like ten dollars per click, fifteen dollars per click. You're gonna burn out, right? So try an indirect way of trying to to um, an indirect way of actually um, of targeting these guys. So for example, maybe you're targeting people who have just who's about to get married, right? So that's one way you can say, oh, you know, these guys most likely might want to lose weight, right? Or maybe someone that just had a baby, right? Uh, Chances are they might want to lose weight as well, right? So again, you see, it's about about about, about trying being being very creative with your marketing, right? Now, then, eventually, we realized that the digital marketing spend we started moving a lot towards organic growth. So, um, well, while while we were spending about um, uh, was this well, we were spending a lot on the on, on the on the search marketing. Eventually, that started shifting into more organic. So we started focusing a lot more on SEO and things like that, right? Um, so SEO was was fantastic, and it's one of the most brilliant things um, that, that I dived into. I'm, in fact, till today is something I'm I'm really passionate about, um, and we can see right that the results were there, right? So we no longer needed to spend money on 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 on, on, on certain paid keywords. We were ranking first all the time for for things. So SEO is something that we spent quite a lot of uh, time on. Uh, it's definitely something that uh, worth it. Did Audrey like disappear? <laughs> Audrey, <laughs> yeah, he disappeared for like five minutes. Yeah, she will be back. So, yeah. Sure, sure. Okay, uh, great. So there are some questions in the chat. Uh, one is asking, at what point did you make transition from paid media to SEO? Ah, right. Ah, there we go. Hi, Blake. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, for SEO, um, so we started realizing that. Uh, so I think, I think SEO works well when your traffic is. Is high, right? So one of the one, one of the key things that um, that Google tracks your score is: are people visiting your site? Are they bouncing off your site? And we had a lot of uh, we used a lot of our digital marketing uh, spend, right, to push that a lot. But eventually, when we started ranking, uh, so again, when we when we looked at our marketing uh, our marketing spend across the different keywords across the different, bear in mind there were like thousands of keywords that we were we, we were working at, at at any month in time, right? Um, Let's say, give you an example. Like, say it was a it was a health problem, right? Um, uh, let's say dandruff, right? Um, and we wanted we we were targeting like okay, dandruff products in Malaysia, right? So we started spend uh, we just spending a bit of ad spend on these things. But then later on, when we realized oh we're starting to rank a little bit higher, then we start reducing our ad spend on that. Eventually, when we realized that oh you know what we were, we were constantly ranking within the top five, then we can start turning that off a little bit more. Uh, and then we, we we would drive that ad spend to other keywords that were not performing as well. Yeah. So SEO was was was, was something that really drove a, a ton of traffic, right? Um, and we really spent a lot of money on that. Right. Right. So I I think you started off your career as SEO practitioner as well, right? Were you doing uh, SEO yeah, before? Yeah, I started before this? the digital marketing space. So it's something <laughs> right. that what. That that I, I actually really really loved, yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Were you doing it in house at Koyara? I think uh, people Sorry. are asking if people are asking if you were doing it in house or you hired an agent for SEO. Right. I'll be honest. Right now, the the, the agents like I think about eighty or ninety percent of the agents and people that you see online who are offering SEO services, <laughs> they're crap. Right. They'll tell you like, oh, you know, I'm going to do an SEO score on your page, and let me show you. Oh, you got sixty percent, and you know, I can drive it to eighty percent. I just need to change your meta tags and all that. Trust me, like, it's 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 crap, right? You want to test an SEO person, right? Ask them what their something like what what their backlink strategy is, right? Um, backlinks are one of the number one. In fact, I think it still is the number one way to 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 go with SEO. So. Um, if you're engaging engaging with these guys, ask them what the strategy is because they should be spending about sixty percent of the time trying to figure that out, right? How to get links back to your page. 
if they tell you they're going to change your page and make it more SEO friendly and mobile friendly, like, you can do that shit on your own. All right. Like, you're not going to like, like, don't, don't pay someone to go and do that. Uh, trust me, I've scrutinized a lot of all these SEO experts. Like you search SEO, SEO services, in Malaysia, I guarantee you like 70, 80% of them, like, they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Actually the SEO, the on-page SEO, if, if you learn it a bit, you will be able to do it yourself, right? Sure, but sure. when but it comes to backlinking, like 10, 20% of, of you ranking eventually. So, right. um, I mean, the, the, the guys who I say who are, who are, who are really good at it, like, I mean, I, I'm, I've, I've, I've looked at some, some of these gurus that, 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 that are doing all these SEOs. So like, um, they, they do have some, I mean, because they are on the first page, right? So they must have done something right. Um, but the services that they offer when they come to me with a quotation and what they're doing, I don't know. I mean, I was, I was, I, I was disappointed with what I, what I saw there. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. So, uh, okay. Let me look at the question. There is some questions coming in. Tina is asking, how much do you spend online advertising a month? So, oh. hmm. yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if you can answer that, but if you cannot, can you just like, Tell us how much did you spend on SEO, how much on Facebook ads, on different kind of ads that you had. Okay, so so the way we calculate how much we should spend was uh, basically a percentage of our revenue. So depending on the on on, on, on our revenue amount. So in the beginning, when we were doing something like like fifty thousand, uh, fifty thousand dollar, hey, fifty thousand ringgit a month, uh, we would say, okay, you know what, we can dedicate maybe ten percent of that, uh, and then. We'll, uh, we'll figure out how to distribute maybe like that five thousand to go to go uh, to, to be spread out uh, across that. As we continue to grow, then we started to um, uh, that that ten percent amount still remained, right? Uh, but again, it depends on on how we budget. Uh, uh, it, it changed from month to month. But I'll say it ranged between um, it could be between five percent to about fifteen percent of our total revenue. Um, by by then, I think we were. The most I think we spent was something about close to about 50,000 50, a month. Uh, but that was more towards the later stage uh, when revenue was definitely a lot higher than that. Yeah. Yeah. So which, which channel were you guys spending on mostly Facebook ads or Google ads? Uh, no, with fa fa Facebook, not so much. Uh, Facebook, we used it a lot more for branding purposes. So our digital marketing was split between from branding to conversions to... Mm -hmm. uh to, to to more search ads or seo and things like that so we had we we we, we had a depending on how we we're performing for the previous month we would adjust it accordingly um but i would i, I would say it changes it changes depends uh, depends on what uh yeah it, it, it really changes all the time yeah so i can't really say which one we've spent most on yeah right right Okay, cool. So there's a lot of questions coming in about SEO, SEO. I think there's a lot of SEO fans here. Oh, wow. <laughs> right. Asking you about how to create backlinks. SEO um, friends Okay. Okay. We didn't, so, uh, SEO yeah. is not something that you spend money on. Like, say, so, so John Kingston says, how much money do you spend on SEO when you first started? Um, Bear in mind, SEO is something that is a long-term game, right? It's something that you're you are, you are investing in for the long term. You will not see results within one or two months. We only saw results after nine months, right? And that's something because uh, it takes time for Google to recognize that, hey, you know what? These guys are something that is worth, uh, worth me recommending to, to my customers, right? So think about it, right? What is Google in for, right? So Google is in the business of providing the most relevant searches to their customers, right? So how relevant are you to, uh, to them? So um, when, again, like again, something as simple as like, like dandruff products in Malaysia, that could be thousands of re results for that. How do you stand out as the one, right? So making sure that people don't bounce, right? When they land on your page, um, then they're not going to bounce. So we, we don't spend money on this thing. We just make sure that it's, it's uh it's in place right what are the are the key things that is going to make this relevant to a customers that have that they're, they're, they're searching for dandruff products in malaysia right uh we also identify how much how many people are actually so there's a lot of tools out there hrefs seo malls like all, all, all these tools you can use right so that's something that i'll say spend money on because these tools 
I want help with SEO. It's a lot better that you, you spend money on these tools than to spend money on like an ex SEO expert. It's, I can tell you it's not gonna, you're not gonna see results there. <laughs> yeah. Take time, go read. Um, there's, there's tons of uh, articles out there. Um, yeah. Yeah, true, true. I mean, this is what we always say, like SEO is a long term game. If, if you are planning to get any customer, any anyone from SEO, just, just think long term. Short term will be like Facebook ads and all those things, I believe. Okay, let's, let's switch gear. Let's mm. switch back to our e-commerce. We were talking about e-commerce earlier. Sure. So um, what was the top mistake you made at the beginning of your journey in when you were creating your e-commerce? Right. Anything that you can uh, think of, like share with someone who is just starting out. Okay. Um, well, for me, it's a product mix, right? So what are you selling, right? Uh, making sure that there's margins to work with. Uh, on average, our margins are close to between 15 to 30%. I can tell you it's so little because having a product that's 15 to 30%, uh, which is what most retailers have, um, unless you're doing, we realize that we cannot be doing revenues of 50,000, 60,000 a month. Like, like it's not going to get us anywhere. In fact, everyone, the, the ones who make money most is probably the, um, uh, your, your, your retailers, right? Uh, you are, you yourself as a, as, as a, the, the brand owners, right? Not you as a retailer, you're not going to be making much from there. I can assure you. So, um, choosing the right product to sell, um, making sure that there's a decent margin, um, to be made. Uh, I think that's going to be that's really very key. The second thing is the turnover, right? Realizing that you don't need to make money from everything that you're selling, right? So I'm talking with this from a perspective that uh, of a retailer that has a large product mix, right? If you're if you own the brand, you own the product. Uh, I'll say that uh, this probably doesn't apply, but um, a little bit maybe, right? So turnover is going to be very key. You don't necessarily need to make money from everything, right? If I buy if I buy a hundred products of um, of shampoo, for example. Uh, maybe 60% of it, I can make money. 40% of it, I would, I'll, I'll, I'll probably want to lose money from it just to make sure there's constant turnover, right? To make sure that the products are keep, uh, are turning in and out of your, your, your warehouse. So, um, so yeah, turnover is definitely, uh, one of the most important thing as well. Yeah. Again, then the third thing is probably hiring, right? Don't stinge on, on, on hiring, hiring the right people is key. Um, I, 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 I wish I didn't. Uh, stinge on that in the beginning. Uh, towards the end, I realized, yeah, you know what? It's business are built by people, not so hire the right people at the right time as well. Yeah, right, right, great stuff. Like having a good margin, constant turnover of your product, and don't be stingy when it comes to hiring, right? Yeah. Oh, lastly, okay. sorry. Another thing is also the brand that you're working on. Um, like focus on the long term, right? So focus on building your brand spread the word of what you're known about, you know, focus on what you have controlled on, um, on, on what you have actually control, uh, things that are long-term, right? Things like SEO, things that don't, I mean, it's think about the long-term. Don't just think about, yeah, I need to make money within the first month or the second month. Like, like uh, you're building a business, right? It takes time. Um, think about what's, uh, think about the long-term, yeah. Okay, true, true. So actually, you think um, you think is asking the same question. She's asking, could you share what were the mistakes you made that you were starting off? If you could change, what would you do? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, mm, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, is there anything you want to add? What would you do? Oh, what mean, would I you think, change? I think, I think the, the the four things that I, I spoke about were based on mistakes that I've made. Um, like I said, in the beginning, we didn't think about, we thought that, you know, every product that had to, had to make money, right? So we're making sure that we made money on every single product. But eventually I started learning the ways of how the Jaya grocers, the big supermarkets, the, the AA pharmacies and the Watsons, how they are turning over stock and why is it their revenues are so much higher, um, uh, a, a, a lot higher and a lot, the, the volume was just ridiculous, right? So then I started realizing like, hey, you know what? It's, it's, about, it's about moving your stock, right? Bear in mind, their they are net margin. So I was trading at a net margin of something about between 8 to 12%, which is considered a lot higher than industry average. The net margins at Watson's and Guardian's are trading at about 2%, right? So wow. it's, uh, but however, their, their, their revenue um, um, volume was at maybe 10, 20 times of what 
what what what we were doing. So, so yeah, I mean, it's something that's that 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 I realized that oh, I'm in the game of actually making sure that stock is constantly turnover. Yeah, as a retailer. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Yes. Uh, what don't you say? The eighty twenty rule. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, true. By the way, guys, um, if you're watching this, we are going to have a next Shopify, I mean, our Shopify workshop is going to be taught by Ian. Yes. Yep. If you are interested, the link is in the comments. You guys can, can check it out. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Audrey is back. Hi, Audrey. Oh, yes, <laughs> back. Lady boss. <laughs> <Hello>. <laughs> I was listening. So I think um I, I think it's very exciting to hear what you have shared, right? I think from here you have shared about your story, um, how you started your website, um, how you started your business, also talking about uh why you use Shopify. Um and of course you also do share about um SEO. I, a lot of people ask like the, the million dollar question, how you get so many people to come to your website, right? Because some people, one thousand people coming in a month or so struggling already, you know? So uh, being able to get fifty K a day, that's pretty insane um, and I think you have dropped a lot a lot of gold nuggets uh, to to pretty much everyone so thank you so much Ian for everything um, I think I, I think maybe one of the big questions uh, really wanted to ask you is you know because by the end day we are also talking about Shopify here right so how do you think you know Shopify has actually helped you accelerate your business I know that I, I know the uh, the couple of times you told me like you know you are I think there's a few times you just told me that hey Shopify is one of the most SEO friendly uh, platforms, um yeah. Shopify Shopify backend is really good um it helps you know reduce uh, a lot of headaches and so on so far I think you know one of these things you can actually share with everyone. Right, I sound like the the ultimate Shopify worshiper. <laughs> yeah, you are the ultimate Shopify worshiper. Every day, as you e-commerce, you go like go just do Shopify, please worship Shopify. It, it is true. I mean, I I do recommend that. I mean, I I love e-commerce as a whole, uh, and I think I think I say Shopify is probably the easiest way to get into into e-commerce lah, right? To start something and to uh really start selling something so that you know you don't lose out on customers and things like that, and then slowly grow your way up or even grow out of Shopify one day, right? Um, I think because of a lot of the, like I say, I, I, I talk again about the whole user experience, right? I talk again about, about the things that, that businesses would need, right? So um, the, the tools that Shopify offers as um, a lot of, it, it offers a lot of automation, right? Um, there are things that you can you can you can schedule and, and this is where it stands out across hey above um, the the magentos or even the WooCommerce and the easy stores um, um, uh, the, the other platforms that they that they are offered in the, uh, for e-commerce um, is the whole app store that they have right because of the if you think about because they open it up to everyone right. Um, if you're if you're facing a particular problem, right? Like let's say there's not a particular kind of discount that you want to offer to customers, um, and it's not available in in Shopify, chances are someone will probably made an app for that, and you can just pay them to help you do that. The integrations that they have, right? So if I if you're using an accounting service like Zero or um, uh, one of those cloud-based accounting accounting services, chances are there's an integration there for that. And therefore, all you need to do is just click once and it syncs all your accounting information there. You just need to set it up once. Um, I mean, we save so much time on that. And that time we can use it to spend on other things while growing our business, right? So I think that's one of the key things why I recommend Shopify so much. Um, I have, I, 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 I'm, I'm not, I, I am biased towards Shopify and I've checked out all the other platforms that there is. And like I say, I, I, I still I still stand by saying that um, it, it it does offer the what the widest range of, um, of of services for again it's not for everyone again it's for businesses that are really looking to take control of the whole website and customer experience. Uh, these are people who want to use um, a site like Shopify. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds great. 
Well, guys, you're going to be wrapping up soon. Um, really, thank you so much for you know tuning in today, guys. And Ian, thank you so much once again. Uh, if you guys want to hear more um, from Ian, do join our Shopify workshop. And he will also he also do share a lot of nuggets during that period of time because I mean, people who is going to be learning how to do the Shopify is because they want to start a business or they want to bring their business online, right? Um, so he's going to share a lot more during that time as well. So you know what, guys, uh, do come by um, and do check out our Shopify workshop. So in the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, stay well, stay at home. Please don't go out, guys, and yep. be happy. What are you hitting Thank today? thousand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't want to know how how many we are hitting today. Uh, not interested to know anymore. But Fair I guess enough. you know it, it's in four digits, so I guess you can go and buy Toto with it already. <laughs> yeah, it's four digits for one. So yeah. 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 Thanks everyone right, for guys. getting in and hearing my stories. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ian, for everything. Um, once again, do come by for our Shopify workshop, guys. Happening on the twelfth of June. It's going to be about a four hour. It's going to be four hours. You only need to take four hours of, of your life. Like it's not very long. Okay. See you soon, guys. Oh, if you guys need, if you have any questions and things like that, you want to reach out to me on Facebook, on Instagram, whatever, on LinkedIn, just search Ian Ng. You can find me there. Um, or yeah, chat with Audrey and uh, Omid as well. <laughs> I'll be happy to share about anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you. So, All right, thank thanks, you. Ian. Thank you guys. All right, thanks, bye. everyone. Bye.